So we're just going to do some of the analysis uh, with the spreadsheet that I sent you. We're going to do some general data analysis, build a histogram, and build a pie chart. Um, in order to do our histogram, the best thing we're going to use is the data analysis tool pack. So if you click on data, there should say data analysis here if you've installed your tool pack. Um, if you don't have it installed, like I don't have it here, you're going to go into your add-in. So if you're on a PC, you're going to go into your options and along the side here it's going to say add-ins and you can select that and under manage add-ins you can hit go. If you're on a Mac, um, on your top ribbon there you're going to choose I believe it's tools and then add-ins and you'll get to the same add-in um, dialog box here and you're just going to select analysis tool pack and hit OK and it will appear there. If it doesn't appear you might need to close Excel and go back in. So when you click on that it's actually going to give you um, a whole slew of different things you can do. Most of this we're going to use post midterm, but a little bit before the midterm as well. So the first thing I asked you to do was calculate mean, median, mode, skewness coefficient, kurtosis coefficient. And we can do these using Excel formulas. Um, the only one here that's a little bit different is that instead of mean, the formula is average, it's not mean. And so if I select average, if I double click on it, um, the formula is populated, you can see the open bracket, and I wanna select all of the data, so only the numbers that I need. Now I can click and drag all the way to the bottom and select everything, close that bracket, um, and it gives me my average there of 73.25. When I do median, if I want to select a whole column of data, I can also go control shift down and it will select it. So that's control shift down um, on a Mac. It's going to be command shift down. Very useful. For mode, you can use either the old mode formula, just M-O-D-E or mode dot single. Um, they're going to uh, be the same answer there. It really doesn't matter which one you use and so our most occurring number the mode is an 80 here and so our skewness to see if it's a positive or a negative skew it's just going to be skew and again we select all of our data hit enter and we see that we have a negative skew here the kurtosis is how fat um our uh distribution of data is. And so that kurtosis um, is just K-U-R-T and we can calculate that. Now when we do this, we can see we've got our numbers given to us. Often what times the question that you're going to get asked on your multiple choice question will just be like, here's some data the skewness coefficient is and it gives you a bunch of answers. So you need to find the skew coefficient. The thing you have to watch for in the multiple choice questions is whether it's pertaining to all of the data. So here we had 20 students or if it was only some of them. It might say something like for the first 10 students, what's the skewness coefficient? And so we'd want that skew but only using the first 10 students. One of the other things we can do to get these descriptors is we can go into data analysis and you'll see descriptors statistics there and you can hit OK and we can give it the input range so I'm going to select our grades here again using my control shift down to select all of them this is a column so I'm going to leave it organized in a column and I selected the grade like the title so I'm going to say labels in first row and I want the summary statistics. I basically want a bunch of summary information and I want to put this in my current worksheet. So I'm going to hit output range and I'm just going to select the place where I want it to kind of start um, that little chart it's going to generate and I can hit OK. And now, and if I just double click between, I can get the information, it gives me a bunch of this information. It gives me that average, it gives me the mean, it gives me the median, it also gives me standard deviation, variance, but my kurtosis is also there, my skew is there, range, min, max, it's all there. So that's another way of getting that information um, in addition to using those individual formulas, okay? So 
looking at the other stuff we have, one of the questions that asked us to do was to create a pie chart. So pie charts are done using categorical data. So here we've got four categories. People are in marketing, finance, accounting, consulting, and it's given us the frequencies. If you're interested, you can see that I use the count if function to basically count up how many times marketing was listed as someone's major, how many times finance was listed as someone's major, accounting, and such. So to put in a pie chart, um, any type of pie or graph charts, um, the, we can just use the charts in Excel. So under insert, we're going to select a chart. Under this, there's statistical charts that has a histogram options. and those can be useful for making a histogram, but not really that useful in this class. And I'm going to get into that in a second. But the pie chart definitely is. The key to success here is to highlight the data you want to make the pie chart out of before you go to insert the pie chart. So we're going to want a 2D pie chart. And just by hitting that, we've got it. Now, oftentimes they give you a pie chart and like on your um, uh, worksheet that you have, it asks you to compare and make sure it's okay. So once you have this, sometimes it's best to go to quick layout and change what you have. So it displays the percentages there, displays those relative frequencies so that you can compare and make sure that you got the same percentages as in the pie chart that they're showing you. Because sometimes they show you that pie chart and it looks very similar, but then when you run it, the percentages you get are actually different. And so they aren't the same. It's like a true false, like does this match or not? And it can be a little bit devious. And so you've got your pie chart there. I'm just going to move this over because I don't need it right this second. And so the one that gives people the most challenge is the histogram. So a histogram we saw is just us sorting um, numerical data into categories or bins. And the way it's going to work in your multiple choice questions is that they're going to show you a histogram like the ones on your worksheet and say, hey, does this match the data that you have? And the important part of that is that the bins are going to be on the bottom of whatever chart they give you to compare to. So we don't want to just randomly build a histogram. We want to build a histogram that uses the same bins as whatever chart they are proposing using. So if I have a bunch of grade data here and I select that data and I wanna build a histogram and I just go insert and I select, hey, give me a histogram, it's gonna auto create our histogram, which is like great for formatting, gives us the ranges, but this is not gonna actually help us match what they've done. So when we go to build a histogram, we're going to use our data analysis pack instead. And if you go into data analysis and it's all alphabetical, you're going to go and you're going to select histogram, hit OK, and you're going to get a dialog box that looks like this. So in order to build a histogram, it just requires two pieces of information, the actual data, which goes in the input, and then the bins. So for us, the bins, I've given them to you on the spreadsheet already. Um, but if they're not there, you're going to look at whatever chart they're giving you to compare to, take the bins off of that chart, the numbers along the bottom, and put them onto the Excel sheet. You're just going to type them out so they look like this. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do there. And so for our input data, we're going to use the grade data. So that's what I've got for my input range. And for my bin range, I'm going to do both of these because I want to actually compare um, these two graphs. And for my output options, I'm just going to let it put it in a new worksheet because this one's kind of um, busy already. And you have to select chart output because that's what gives you the actual picture. The other thing I have to do here is that I selected the labels when I selected my data. So I'm also going to check off labels and I'm going to hit O. Okay, so, oh, I don't know what that was, but, um, so it's going to give you, so using the bins we uh, prescribed, it breaks down the frequencies there and it builds your histogram. Now, this histogram doesn't look exactly like the histograms we've been working uh, with or you've seen in class because the bars aren't close together. 
really when you're comparing, you want to just make sure you're comparing the heights. And that can be easiest to do um, if you uh, have some guidelines on there. So you can change, go under quick layout and just change that. So it's really easy to read kind of what level each of these bars are at. If you're concerned about making the bars close together, you can right click um, on the actual bars and say format data series. And you can change the gap width. So if I bring that down to zero, now they're right beside each other like a standard histogram. Now this histogram, three categories, isn't that useful for getting an idea of kind of the shape of the data. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to make another histogram using the other bins. And so for my data analysis pack, I'm going to hit histogram. And you'll see that the information is still there. So I just need to change the fact that this time I want to use the second set of bins. I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got this histogram, which gives us a little bit more information in terms of like the distribution here, right? We've got like a bump at 60 and a bump at 80, um, giving us this idea of how many people are falling into each of these categories. Um, and again, What's going to happen is they're going to show you a histogram and ask you, does this compare to what the data, like with what's actually happening in the data? And you're going to look along the bottom and you're going to see these numbers 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And that's what you're going to go and add to your, you would type them out so that you can reference them when you're making that histogram. Okay.